The fundamental root of it all building block for statistics is the random variable. So it's worth making sure that we're all on the same page about what exactly a random variable is. You see, random variables are often introduced using coin tossing, dice, or a sampling people from a population because traditionally statistics comes from hazard games and practical applications in social sciences. However, I believe this approach can be misleading since a random variable is fundamentally a mathematical object. Just like vectors are fundamentally a mathematical concept that is used to describe all kinds of data such as a baby's weight and height or a ball's speed and direction, Random variables are a mathematical concept that can be used to describe the behavior of all kinds of phenomena. So what is a random variable? Here's my favorite way of thinking about it. A random variable is simply a circle with an associated name, let's say X. The convention is to use capital letters. What is special about this circle is that some numbers come out from it. For example, dot .21, dot .97, and so on. Actually, any kind of elements of a set could come from a random variable. It could be letters, words, colors, or even shapes. But for now, let's just focus on circles that output real numbers. These numbers are called observations. If you think as a mathematician or a problem solver, you may be trying to find a pattern in this series of numbers. Maybe they are like Fibonacci numbers, in which you use previous numbers to build the next. Or maybe there is some crazy formula that allows to obtain them. However, this is not the case and this random variable could have generated the same numbers in a completely different order or simply different numbers. The fact is that there is not really a way to say exactly which number will come out from this random variable. However, this doesn't mean that there is nothing to know about this random variable. And this is the fundamental and most powerful intuition behind all statistics and probability. Just because you cannot predict exactly something doesn't mean that you can't characterize it. In other words, uncertainty can be quantified. So what is there to know about this random variable? Besides the fact that it only generates real numbers and not crazy shapes, you may have noticed that this one in particular doesn't generate negative numbers. It doesn't seem to generate numbers greater than 2 either, but actually, this is only because I have only shown you a few numbers. If we let it generate more observations, we will see that sometimes, but not that often, it generates numbers greater than 2, sometimes greater than 3, and so on. So how do we keep track of this how often it generates numbers? You may want to pause the video for a moment and think for yourself. How do you keep track of an infinite population in which the order doesn't matter? How do you characterize this population? The answer that statisticians have found to this question is called a histogram but let's tackle this step by step. A first idea is to keep track of the generated numbers on the real line. We will also keep track of n, the number of observations that the random variable has generated, because it will be important later. On the real line, we can draw a little tick in the place where a number was generated. We can just drop the negative numbers because this random variable in particular doesn't generate any. You see that soon enough, we will have a bunch of ticks and we can see that most of them are really close to zero. To be more rigorous, we can arbitrarily choose a number epsilon, let's say it's one, and we can divide the real line into segments or bins of this length. 
we can then count how many numbers have fallen in each of the bins by drawing a rectangle over it, with its height corresponding to the count. This is called the frequency. As we let n grow more and more, you may see that this approach has an obvious problem, because we will end up with infinitely high rectangles. So instead of keeping track of the frequency, we could keep track of the relative frequency, which is simply the frequency divided by the total number of observations n. This means that we divide the height of each rectangle by the total number of observations that we have generated. Let's now turn to epsilon, the size of the bins. We have chosen epsilon equal to 1, but we could have chosen a smaller size to capture more detail about the behavior of the random variable. The problem when you do this is that the rectangles will get each time smaller since there will be less observations in smaller bins. The rectangles will shrink and disappear as we choose smaller and smaller bins. A solution to this problem is to scale the rectangles according to epsilon, resulting in the relative frequency density. This time, no matter what n and epsilon we choose, by construction, the total area of the graph will always be equal to 1, resulting in a more stable description of the behavior of the random variable. This is called a histogram and it is the preferred tool to describe the behavior of a random variable. The most complete and precise description of the behavior of the random variable is when we have a larger number of observations and very small bins. As we let epsilon approach 0 and n approach infinity, the histogram stabilizes and gets arbitrarily close to a curve. In the limiting case where n tends to infinity and epsilon tends towards 0, the histogram is described by a curve called the probability density function or PDF. In this particular case, the probability density function is e to the minus x, but any kind of curve, as long as it is positive and the area under it is 1, is a PDF and thus has a corresponding random variable. You may be thinking, wait, there is no way that the histogram of any infinite set of numbers will stabilize around a curve, and you would be right. Not every infinite set of numbers is a random variable. Actually, random variables are only the ones whose histograms stabilize around a curve. This curve, the probability density function, represents all there is to know about this random variable. And so we say that this curve completely characterizes the random variable. Actually, this curve is what influences the generation of the observations. It is the underlying structure, the truth of the random variable. It is only in the limiting case, also called asymptotic case, that we can characterize a random variable. This is one of the fundamental interpretations of probability. Repetition allows to discover the truth of a random variable. Or in other words, probability is the limiting case of frequency. This truth, the probability space, is essential because only in this space, and not in the observation space, there exists enough rigorousness to build mathematical theory. Let's summarize what we have learned until now. The fundamental intuition of statistics is that uncertainty can be quantified. Even though you cannot predict exactly something, doesn't mean that you can't characterize it. A random variable is a way to quantify uncertainty. It is represented by a circle and a name, and it encodes the relationship between a truth and its observations.
going from the truth to the observations is called sampling. The underlying structure of a random variable, its truth, is encoded in its probability density function, that is the limiting case of having infinite observations. However, most of the time, we don't have infinite observations, but we would still like to go from observations to the truth. This procedure is called estimation or inference, but this is the subject of another video.